Welcome to the TFO Sportscast. I wear your granddad's clothes. I look incredible. I'm in this big ass coat from that thrift shop down the road. That's right. I'm the TFO Commish, the Raj. Now let's kick it. Top five moments of week 11. Number five, Dutch Ovens versus the Cleveland Steamers for the Bad Pop Divisional Championship. The brothers Anderson face off again, but this time to determine the king of the Bad Pop Division. And hosted on our last Thursday night football to boot. A very defensive battle, but both Anderson brothers were able to find the end zone as at half we see a tied 7-7 score. Dutch Ovens would come out hot to start the third quarter as Nips Ahoy sails a 30-yard touchdown pass right into Donkey Punch's hands. Cleveland tried to tie things back up, but quarterback Jack Sloth had a horrid day and was picked off by hot lunch. This would help set the Ovens up for a 5-yard flea flicker to Dirty Sanchez. Steamers would block the field goal, and on their next possession would bring the game within six after an 11-yard run by Bone Air. And on the next drive, the Dutch ovens fumbled right to Anita Bona, right in their own red zone. But the ovens' defense held and shut down the Cleveland offense. Hot Carl with the go-ahead field goal, and Aaron Anderson celebrates as his Dutch ovens have defeated his brother's Cleveland Steamers and are the 2013 TFO Bad Pop Divisional Champs. Congrats, Aaron. Ovens over the Steamers, 23-14. to Number 4, Care Bears versus the Champs Chumps. Hated divisional rivals Care Bears and Champs Chumps wouldn't be in the postseason, but that didn't stop these teams from trying to prove who is the better TFO team. Care Bears would strike first with a 69-yard touchdown pass from Harmony to good luck. But not to be outdone, the best kick returner in TFO, Chester Drawers, runs back his second kickoff touchdown of the year to tie the game. A pair of fumbles later and Cher Bear finds the end zone to take us to 14-7 at the half. In the third, quarterback Harmony Bear makes a big mistake and is picked off by Robert Tylenol, helping set up Chester Drawers for another touchdown to tie the game at 14. But Cher Bear wanted to share the love as he's able to rush in another score. Champs quarterback Chuckum Farr would tie us back up with a beautiful 40-yard pass to gotta catch them all, and we are back to a tied score. Something had to give, and it did, as the Care Bears lost their momentum as Cher Bear went down with an injury. Backup running back Friend Bear comes in, but is unable to make the fourth down conversion. Opportunity knocks, and Chuck em Far hits Gotta Catch Em All once again for the go home score. Awesome game. Care Bears lose a tight one to the Chumps, 21 to 28. Number 3, the Beer Gods versus the Axe Icons. Both teams contending for a wild card spot here. Axe quarterback Buddy Guy would score first with a 5-yard pitch to Billy Gibson. The Beer Gods would tromp down the field themselves with a 7-yard pass from Rogue Dead Guy to George Killian. The Icons didn't cry and instead blocked the extra point to keep the lead by 1. But they wanted more, and so Jimi Hendrix took a deep drag and ran over that smoke on the water for an 82-yard touchdown run. The Beer Gods would kick in a field goal to end the first half down by five. But then Beer Gods can hold their beer as they try to make the comeback with a 26-yard pass to Elliot Ness to take the two-point lead and then a field goal in the fourth to take the lead to five. The Icons needed a miracle, and they found their TNT with Angus Young, who picks off Rogue Dead Guy with less than two minutes in regulation. Buddy Guy with a pass to Joe Santriani, and that is all she wrote. The Beer Gods lose an epic to the Icons, 19-21. to Number two. Marvel Mutants versus the Atlanta Maulers for the Bad Crackle Divisional Championship. A lot of weight on both teams looking for that first round playoff bye. But no pressure on quarterback Professor X 
as on the very first play of the game launches a 70-yard pass to Wolverine and the Mutants are already in the driver's seat. And then a 6-yard touchdown rush by Quicksilver to take them Mutants up by two touchdowns. But the point after is blocked and so we are at 13-0. But the horsemen get together and Ric Flair throws a 36-yard bullet to the enforcer, Arn Anderson, a spinebuster in a touchdown of their own. But Wolverine was a different kind of animal today as he runs an 85-yard reversal all the way in for another score, putting the mutants above the Maulers by 13. Ric Flair looked ready to retire. That was until he hit a 13-yard pass to TFO's greatest receiver, Lord Steven Regal, putting the WCW bankruptcy on hold. And then Atlanta magic would be found as Ric Flair connects again to his best friend, Arn Anderson, with a 31-yard touchdown reception to take the Maulers into the lead by one. But that wouldn't last long as Quicksilver powers in a 20-yard touchdown to take back the lead by six. But Atlanta has heart, as Dr. Death jumps into the air for an amazing catch to put the lead back in the Mauler's corner. Desperate times call for desperate action, as the Mutants, with just 26 seconds left and on the 50-yard line, gets the pass to Wolverine, who slices and dices his way to the Marvel's first TFO Divisional Championship. Way to go, Jobber. Mutants over the Maulers. Number one, New York Miami Wolverines versus the Westeros Guardians for the Mad Crackle Divisional Championship and the loser not making the playoffs. The Wolverines have been in a rut since starting 5-0, and losing four of their last five games. But the Guardians never forgot their Week 5 loss to the East Coast Goliath and the return of superstar running back Adard Stark helped settle them Westeros nerves. But winter came early and Stark found himself re-injured during the first half, helping his team tie going into halftime 10-10. A 25-yard Jamie Lannister touchdown helped to revitalize the team of Thrones as they go up by 7. But the luck of Marino is strong as the quarterback dodges and maneuvers in a 43-yard rush to tie things back up. Westeros quarterback Tywin Lannister would not stand for such injustice as he spears the ball right into Jon Snow for a touchdown reception. The Wolverines would rally behind their king as Marino sails a 61-yard pass into Desmond Howard to tie us up at 24 each to begin the fourth. But the bloodshed was not yet done as Jamie Lannister runs the reversal again for another touchdown and now we have them Guardians up by seven. Against any other team, they could have rest easily, but the Wolverines have made a career out of the luck of Marino, and with less than two minutes remaining, Marino does it again as he sprints to the end zone for another Wolverine score. Amazing. Could we be seeing a mad crackle divisional championship overtime? In the kick heard round the world, Dan Marino does not hold the laces out, and Jay Feely's extra point is blocked. And Westeros takes the Mad Crackle Divisional Crown with that one block. Congratulations, Kyle. Wolverines lose a heartbreaker to the Guardians, 30-31. to TFO 2013 Pro Bowl Announcements With the 2013 regular season in the books, the TFO announced the 2013 Pro Bowlers. In the bad conference, we see the Marvel Mutants have the most Pro Bowlers with a total of six. Beer Gods running back LaFin DeMonde gets the bad 2013 offensive MVP crown with his impressive 1,590-yard season, more than 500 yards over any other running back in TFO. Wow. Marvel's linebacker Iron Man gets the bad 2013 defensive crown after his 12-sack season. In the Mad Conference, we see the Care Bears have the most Pro Bowlers with a total of five. Linebacker Joey Meatballs of the Lama Nation gets the Mad 2013 Defensive MVP crown with a massive 14-sack season. Bitsmack quarterback the RC takes the Mad 2013 Offensive MVP crown with 2,237 pass yards, nine passing touchdowns, 815 rushing yards, and 13 rushing touchdowns. 
The TFO Pro Bowl will be broadcast on May 12th, a week before the TFO Shiva Bowl. Please note that all players will be healthy for this contest as this game takes place outside of our 2013 season. Week 1 Playoffs This week we have four awesome, amazing playoff games. It's do or die time, folks, as this is single elimination from here on out. Saturday we have the Bad Conference wildcard games. First we will see the Axe Icons take on the Cleveland Steamers. Buddy Guy and them Icons look toward the championship, but Bonaire and the Cleveland Steamers looked a shit on their parade. Our other Saturday game will showcase the Atlanta Maulers taking on the bad snap divisional champions, the Hollywood Heroes. Can Ric Flair make sure WCW's legacy survives, or will John McClain and the Hollywood Heroes blow them to pieces? Sunday will showcase our Mad Conference wildcard games. We will see a Week 11 rematch as Tim's Nightmares faces off against their hated rivals, the Llama Nation. The Llama spit in Tim's face last week to get the wildcard spot. Will Oogie Boogie and the Nightmares receive redemption, or will the Llama Nation and Belt Buckle Face repeat last week's ass kicking? And then our last wildcard matchup on Sunday will have the Greek Legends taking on the Mad Crackle Champions, the Westeros Guardians. Both teams are 1-1 one one on the season against each other. Can the Greek Legends overcome the injuries to their star running back Achilles, or will Westeros' own injuries to Eddard Stark be the sword that finishes their season? All right, that's all we have for this week. Until next time, until next Tecmo.